Hello. Oh, good morning, Mr. Fastsnaffle. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, you want a new program for the children, eh? Yes, indeed. My ghost program, my ghost. Well, let me see. Oh, no, no, that's too tame. That's, too you too tame? <laughs> no, children nowadays, they want something with snap in it. Oh, I've got the very thing. Killing killers. Very effective, you know, machine guns and falling bodies and screams. <laughs> it's a program that children will go crazy about, yeah. All right, tomorrow at 2 o'clock, fine. Hey, Mr. Fish, aren't you going to give me a chance? Valley, Crosby, all those fellas, they had to start, you know, and I'm better than they are. I know that, I know it. <laughs> well, well, won't you listen to me? Well, go ahead. What can you do? Well, which one do you want to hear first? Oh, that's fine. I'll do it for Mac when he comes in. Just like that. Don't you change a thing. That's... Oh, I love it. Hey, but Mr. Fish, you didn't even listen. Tony, he's got one of his bad days again. You better walk him around the block. Hey, come on. I'll talk to him. He's get excited. You do it for Mildred and me. We'll like it here. Hey. Do imitation as a fellow. He's a talker through his nose, huh? You mean this guy? Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. I'll be back in a flash with the fish. I'll be back with the fish in a flash. He's a good imitation. He's going to be bigger star someday. When he is, I'll give my radio away. You can go get your money back. I would if Maria would get here. She'll be here. Since she's a move in with a girl of friends, she's no got a mama wake her up. I'll go see if I find her. What's she got that I haven't got? A sponsor. Marie. Oh, good morning, Papa. What's the matter? You're late again. Why, well, I, I, I was held up in the subway. Subway? Going to lose your job. Papa, please. Oh, good morning, Princess. Sorry I'm late, Mildred. Don't be sorry. Just tell me how you're doing. There's the man, Mama. There he is. Come, Wilbur, please. Come away. You are Mr. Clark, ain't you, mister? The man on the balloon? Oh, yes, my son. Would you like to have one? <laughs> Boy, bring a balloon. See, Mama, there is a man like that. Well, <laughs> you see, Wilbur thought the Mr. Cluck on the balloon was, uh, I mean, an imaginary character, like a Donald Duck <laughs> or uh, Popeye. <laughs> I did not. You said a real person couldn't have a face like that. <gasps> <laughs> Wilbur. Wilbur? Good morning, Mr. Cluck. Where's my rehearsal? Miserable brat. It'll be in Studio X in an hour and a half. Too late an hour and a half? Who moved it up? Well, there's a notation here that Mr. McCorkle did it. Oh, Mr. McCorkle did it. On whose authority? Why wasn't I notified? Oh, I don't know, sir. I have nothing to do with that. Oh, no, no. Of course not. There, there, my dear. I'm a brute to let other people's stupidity make me cross with you. <laughs> I was going to give you this later. Maybe you'll forgive me when you see it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Clark. That's all right, my dear. We'll have a little bite together after the broadcast. Uh, boy, have you seen Mr. McCorkle? Uh, he might be in Studio X, Mr. Clark. If I want any guessing done, I'll do it myself. Now, you find McCorkle. Tell him I'm looking for him. Yes, Mr. Clark. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I almost forgot. I've got something important to see you about when you get through. I want to see if your eyes are big enough for radio. Mm -hmm. It's not an expensive gift. I'll, I'll give it back to him. No. I'll do it for you. But, Papa, you don't understand. I understand lots of things, you know. I don't care what the Consolidated Censorship Department says, sis. You can't advertise Eden's underwear without using the word panties. It's their chief product. All right, my darling brother, but take it easy. You're as nervous as a cricket time leg. You better phone the Censorship Department, Miss Jean. Yes. Tell them that I can't write breeches, drawers, or step-ins in any of the commercials. It has to be panties. No, wait a minute, Miss Jeans. Don't phone. Go down there yourself and see what that old blue nose... Max! Go ahead, Miss Jeans. Tell them that the Eden Company manufactures panties. And if I can't say that on the air, they shouldn't have accepted the account. What's wrong with panties? Well, radio's prize-winning announcer. Come on in. Hello, Dave. Say, so you look pale. What's the matter? Is it must be your last commercial? No, no, I just feel low today. I dropped in to see if the new Popola script is right. Oh, you bet. Papola. 
That stimulating drink that all America goes for. Guaranteed to let you down for a nickel. Oh, careful, sis. The old dictator's liable to jump out of an inkwell and take his account away from us. Oh, no, not today. The clock should be in very fine spirits. The competitor just threw in the sponge and called the undertaker. Holy jumping static. Nelson's beverage goes bankrupt and the old boy takes a no cipher in his penthouse apartment. Say, hey, that's too bad. Clark told me Nelson was in trouble. Something about a typhoid epidemic down at Nelson's factory, but I thought it was just a rumor. It was. But leave it to Cluck to keep it going. You know, I don't see how that guy sleeps nights with his conscience. Where's McCorkle? What did you want to see him about? Speaking I'm of sponsors... I'm going out window. this way. I get enough of him I'm during rehearsal. I swear, Steenie, if Cluck says one word to me that I don't like, I'm going to kick his teeth then. Oh, no, you don't. You can hate him, but you can't throw our bread and butter out the window. What's doing? I want to see him. It's not Mr. Cluck, Miss McCorkle. It's just this fresh kid. She said you were busy, but I thought you'd like to know. Cluck's tearing through the holes looking for Mr. McCorkle. Thanks, kid, but you better cut out that imitation. Every time I hear our ducky little sponsor's voice, I want to hit somebody. Was it my voice you were referring to, McCorkle? Oh, no, not at all, Mr. Cluck. Come right in. Unexpected pleasure. Have a chair. Never mind the chair. Why did you delay my rehearsal? Well, we called your office to explain. Didn't you get the message? No. Well, answer me. Mr. Cluck, Miss Bellow is on the Normandy. The Normandy hasn't docked yet on account of the fog. Even a radio producer can't control that. And they said the boat will dock in plenty of time for your broadcast. I've advertised that woman all over the country, and I'm not going to take a chance. Now you call up the police and have them send a harbor boat and an escort to get her. If I don't get some action inside of 20 minutes, my account goes to another agency. Oh, we'll take care of everything, Mr. Clark. Hey, Mr. McCorkle, if the boat sinks or anything, will you give me a chance? I can imitate an opera singer. Harry. Miss Bellow is a color to your soprano. Well, so am I. Listen. like it. It's terrible, I tell you. It smells. You put her on the program. I'm not talking about her. It's the air in here. Why don't they have windows in this place? Because they let in street noises, Mr. Clark. And then why don't they get a ventilator that will work? It's stifling. Why don't you try the sponsor's room? Are you trying to tell me where to listen to my program? Oh, no, of course not, Mr. Clark. I just thought you'd be more comfortable there. The air. What's the matter with her voice? Are you doing that? Okay. Where do you think you're going? A young man, if you want to keep this account. Mr. Clark, I've got to give the announcer your changes in the closing commercial. Well, then you tell him to put some life in. It reads it like a funeral notice. Yes, Mr. Clark. Hello, Mac. What are you doing out here? If I have to listen to that worm another minute, I'll strangle him. What's his pet hate tonight? The ventilating system says it's suffocating him. It does? That makes me very happy. Look, Feeney, will you... No, 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 no. I'm not going in there. This is a partnership, and I've had it in my hair all afternoon. Now it's your turn. Oh, please, Feeney, just for a minute. I've got to do something. All right, but don't be long. He affects me the same way, too. How do you do, Mr. Cluck? There she goes. There she goes again. Shh, Mr. Cluck, please. Don't you shush me. I'm trying to smooth this number out. I can't very well do it if you insist on shouting in my ears. Look, Mr. Clark, why don't you go upstairs to the uh, sponsor's room? I won't go to the sponsor's room. Nobody can say that Caesar Clark wasn't right on deck when we're having trouble. But there's a deck up in the sponsor's room. It has a couch and a sort of a spit tune. It's lovely. I won't go. Oh, listen to that woman. $2,000 a broadcast and she squawks like a guinea pig. 
There's a better radio in the sponsor's room. Shut up. I'll cut her pay in half. Nobody's going to cheat Caesar Cluck. There, and this place is getting worse. <sighs> Mr. Cluck. The air in this building is changed, washed, and sterilized every two minutes. It doesn't bother Mr. Fish, and it doesn't bother me. So think of your health, Mr. Cluck, and leave us alone. Do you realize who you're talking to? I do, and I'm referring to your blood pressure. You're a very sick man, Mr. Cluck. You're liable to drop dead at any moment, which would make a lot of people very happy, but would also leave them without a meal ticket. So if you don't want to use the sponsor's room, find some place where you can quiet down. You can't order me out. I'll have you fired. Not for doing a bad job. No. You're uh, being consolidated for a throw, and that's what you're going to get in spite of yourself. I'll have that fellow thrown out of radio. I'll switch my program to another network. Now, Mr. Clutton, you'd only... Now, listen. If you say sponsor's room once more, I'll have a new advertising agency, too. Well, good evening, Mr. Clark. Why, hello, my dear. Why aren't you listening to the program? I wouldn't go in there now, Steve. The sound in there, he's very nervous. Uh, probably he lets you in there. But of course, it isn't important that I listen to my own program. Oh, well, that's easy. Why don't you go up to the sponsor? Stop waving your arms, you idiot. I like Miss McCorkle's suggestion. <laughs> Come along, dear, and keep me company. Sponsor's room. Now, why didn't I think of that? You know, my dear, you're the only one around here who doesn't look. It's just that, well, you're a very big man, and they don't understand you. But you do, don't you? Of course I do. All successful men are brusque, and, you know, deep down inside, I think you're kind of the father. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mr. Clark, can I talk to you for a minute? Later. There's a broadcast on you. The matter's urgent. You better see me now. Go ahead, dear. I'll be with you in a minute. Barney, I thought I told you never to come here. You did. But the boys thought they worked extra hard in the Nelson Beveridge Typhoid story. They thought maybe you'd like to give them a little bonus, so say a hundred grand. You are very well paid. If you're not satisfied, I can get someone else. Aren't you forgetting I got the best little group of whisperers in this business? I suppose something should happen to one of your plants. Something like a case of leprosy. Or what if a half a dozen people go blind from drinking Clopatola? Carney, you think I'm fool enough to teach you how to use a weapon without a means to keep you from turning it on me? I have a record of everything you've done since you were 15. If you're still in New York City by this time tomorrow, you'll spend the rest of your life in Sing Sing. Now get out. Listen, Rod, I ain't leaving New York, and you're not going to do anything to make me. Don't forget, Nelson committed suicide. Maybe something just like that could happen to you. How can anyone listen to it? Drives me crazy. Well, then why do you put it on your program? Well, we have to try and appeal to all classes. You know, there are some people who actually like that sort of stuff. Do they? Yes. Now, there's my kind of music. Hello, Tuttle. Look, do me a station announcement when I finish the commercial. What's the idea? Well, they put me on the Barker's Brand Flake Circus and Studio Z, and I'll have to run to make it. Well, isn't that shoving them pretty close together, the same announcer on the following program? I don't know. I only work here. I wish you would do it, though. I don't want to start the next program out of breath. It's all right with me if Mac and Finney don't mind. They won't. And you better ask Finney. He's over in the control room. Uh, I don't want to ask any favors in front of Clark. The whole bunch is dying to get me fired anyway. Don't worry about that. The great Caesar's up in the sponsor's room. His name would be Caesar. No, 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 no. Don't sit there. You can't see. But try this one. <clears throat> now, isn't this better? Just like a theater. Uh, don't you think we should have the door open? It's a little stuffy in here. Oh, on the contrary. It's quite cozy. Oh. My, that's a nice perfume you're wearing. Thank you. I like it. You know you're a very attractive girl, Miss McCorkle. I don't think I ever noticed it before. Oh, well, you're just being nice, Mr. Clark. It's probably the, the music of the hair or something. No, 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 it isn't. You know, I'm considered a very fine judge of beauty. Don't be silly, Mr. Clark. What will they think downstairs? You know very well all they can see in the window is their own reflection. <laughs> oh, please, Mr. Clark. Remember your blood pressure. 
It doesn't bother me half as much as you do. Do you uh, wonder it... why the girls don't like you? Does the other fellow always get the good job? Well, maybe you lack... That's the wrong line. He's reading last week's commercial. I work I'm afraid, Miss McCorkle, this is the last straw. Oh, no, it isn't, Mr. Cluck. This is... Great right for me until I discovered Cluck's Popola. Since then, Glomer's windows are the talk of Osceola. And the little secret, the redhead in the Mrs. Lingerie will First soon Cluck. be Miss Upstairs. Plotka. Can you kill that speaker from down here? Why, sure. I forgot to tell Dave about Cluck's changes. For vim, vigor, and vitality, think Cluck's Popola, drink Cluck's Popola. We might as well face it. Are you man enough to come along with me? You better let your sister calm him down first. You mean Steenie's up there with him now? So what? She can handle him with one hand tied behind her. I hate sponsors. They all think they're so irresistible. Clock try to put you in the radio? What do you think? <laughs> You have been listening to the Radio Forum. This is the Consolidated Broadcasting System. Well, that's another one wrapped up. I have a feeling we will be too when Mac gets through upstairs. Is Mac up there? If he isn't, I don't know the battling McCorkles. Let him alone. It's about time someone slaps some decency into that would-be Casanova. No, Finney. You don't know Mac's temper. He's liable to get in serious trouble up there. Mac, what have you done? Nothing. He was like that when I came in here. Only a dime a tenth part of a dollar and every chance a winner. Ladies and gentlemen, these men know the strain of circus life. They keep their vim, vigor, and vitality with Barker's brand. Why don't you? Barker's brand circus is on the air. He must have fainted me. Hit his head on the radio. Or had a heart attack. He was always complaining about his heart, but I never thought he was really serious. Is he... is he dead? There's no heartbeat. But we might be able to save him. Mac, go upstairs to the hospital and get whoever's there to send down some metal and glue. Vinny, see if you can get any at the drugstore in case there isn't any here. Uh, Mr. Tuttle, I think you'd better inform the president's office. All right. Don't turn it off. There's something wrong with that orchestra. Balance is off. Bass keeps fading. How can you talk about balance when a man has just died from heart failure? Sorry, but it wasn't heart failure. It was murder. How did I get down here? I carried you. Didn't want him to take you to the emergency with Clark. Is he? You sent the boys after something that might save him. It was too late. I just wanted to get them out of the room so... so you could finish your faint. Well, how did you know I was going to faint? The air pressure in that room had been tampered with by someone who knew Clark's phobia about ventilation. I could see it was getting you. And you deliberately let me work myself up to a faint? I had to be sure. Well, you might have gotten a canary or a white rat or something. Yes. But I also wanted to find out who hit Cluck hard enough to make him fall against that radio. Oh, I can tell you that. You did tell me when you fainted. But I wouldn't tell anyone else or you might find yourself in jail for murder. Surely you don't think I meant to kill him. You didn't kill him. Cluck was alive when you left him. I wish I could believe that. Let me show you something. Did you ever see blood that color? But well, that doesn't look like blood. It's so bright. Cluck had to be alive when you left him to breathe in one of the poisonous gases that turned blood that color. Several of them are easy to make, and one whip will kill a man unless he has an immediate antidote. How many people know that? Well, I know it. That's right, you do. And so does every high school chemistry student. That type of gas is one of the first things they're warned not to make. All right, Mr. Detective. May I make a few deductions now? By all means. 
Suppose the murderer wanted to throw suspicion on someone else. What would he do? You're doing the deducing. Go ahead. Well, he might tell an innocent suspect to be quiet. So she'd look twice as guilty when the murderer cleverly let the finger of suspicion fall on her later. Mm, he might, but in that case, he'd be very silly to remove the only evidence of her struggle with the victim, wouldn't he? You see, I... I found this in Cluck's hand. So? Well, it's yours, isn't it? I've never seen it before. Look, Mr. Butt, you might be a very good radio engineer, but I don't think I'd better leave my future to your sleuthing. But don't you see? This proves I'm right. There must have been someone else in that room after you left. Okay, Mastermind, where do we go from here? Chef de la Femme? Nope. We find out how the gas got in that room. Step in quickly. I don't want to change the pressure any more than we have to. Hey, wait a minute. Do I faint again when I go in there? No. You were hysterical before. And I'm all right now? Yes, your color's good, your pulse was normal. And I'm scared to death. Open the door. Don't turn it on. Rather not be seen up here just yet. But nobody can see in here from the studio. Let's not take any time. You stop holding your breath now. The air's all right. It smells just the same to me. I don't think anything was ever wrong with it. You can't smell reduced pressure, but you can hear it. Are you trying to tell me that the air sounds all right in here now? Yep. Don't you believe me? Sure. I had an uncle once used to hear things other people didn't hear. He saw little men on the foot of his bed sometimes, too. Sound waves actually move the air. They can't move in a vacuum. Oh, neither can brains. What? I said there's no such thing as an absolute vacuum. Everybody knows that. Besides, how could you make even a half vacuum in here? By taking all the air out of the room. And not letting any come in. Everybody knows that. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm waiting for my brother. Oh, I see. And the light hurts your eyes. What business is it of yours? What are you doing here, anyway? I was looking for a mechanical pencil. Green with a gold band. I thought I might have dropped it in here. Well, in that case, it's probably still around you. No, don't bother. Please don't bother. It's not of the slightest consequence. Compromise. Ah, that blockhead. You don't like production men, do you? He's no production man. I'll bet my next month's salary he never saw the inside of a broadcasting station before. Besides, never trust production men. Engineers don't call by their first name. He's been around here over two weeks and he's still Mr. Tuttle. Maybe he's an efficiency expert in disguise. No. No, efficiency experts are always making notes. Well, you heard him say he lost his pencil. Stay away from that window. What? There's somebody down there. Well, even I can figure that out. Maybe it's Mr. Tuttle being subtle again. I don't think so. You stay here. Oh, but, uh, alone? I'll signal you from the studio if it's safe for you to come down. If you don't want death to call again. <laughs> Help! Help, Mr. Butt! Look out! Look out for that broom! What did you say? I was trying to tell you not to fall over that broom. Uh, did you? No. Somebody deliberately tripped me. Hey, look. Let's get out of here. We're both imagining things. The shadow just scared me out of a year's growth. What? I heard that crazy voice say, keep out of this if you don't want death to call again. I thought he was talking right to me. He was. Mm-hmm. Adhesive tape. Not a fingerprint on it. Clean as a whistle. 
Maybe there weren't any. There had to be. I left some on it myself. No, none on this either. Was that dial on Studio M when you heard that voice? It couldn't have been. The shadow's broadcast from Studio Z. If you thought it was a shadow, why did you run? Listen, if you'd been in here alone and thought Dracula was going to jump out of that cabinet, you'd have run too. No, I wouldn't. Oh, hero stuff, huh? No. Reason. First, I'd have looked at the radio. If the dial was at Z, I'd have known that voice had to be cut in from some monitor room. And that someone was trying to frighten me out of here in order to get in and remove evidence without being seen. Say, what does one have to do to get to be as smart as you are? You might start by remembering what day of the week it is. The shadow is broadcast on Wednesday. This is Thursday. Look, Mr. Butts, I may not know what day of the week it is, but I do know that I could dislike you very easily. Blood. <laughs> There's your cherry-colored blood. Pluck got it from one of his own balloons. Reason that one out, Mr. Smarty. I will, under a microscope. Oh, well, be sure and let me know the results. In the meantime, I'm going up to Jones's office and uh, tell him what really happened. You mean you don't believe Cluck was murdered? I did for a minute. You had me ready to go looking for secret passages with mysterious murderers slinking through them, squirting poison gas at people. This is the 20th century, mister, and I don't believe in your phantom of radio form. Well, what's the matter with you? Um, 20th century is making your sister a little bit nervous. Oh, Jones wants to have a talk with everybody who knows about Cluck's death. Hmm, instructions from the president. It's ought to be good. And I still don't believe it. Oh, Mag. Yes? Uh, what did you do to your finger? Oh, <laughs> I cut it this morning with a razor. I'd get rid of that adhesive tape if I were you. Really? Why? I hope you don't know why. Well, I don't know what this is all about, but if it'll make you feel any easier, off it comes. Hello, Tony. Mr. Ben, you want to tell me something, please? Sure. What is it, Tony? Mr. Clark, is the dying at a rumor tonight? Yes. But how did you know that? Well, I see there was a carry him up the stairs. And they give me orders to remove the balloons. Suppose nobody want to see his face no more. Well, if you know anything about Clark's death, you'd better come along with me. Why? I not do nothing. Oh, I didn't say you did. But Mr. Jones wants to see everyone. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a different. Bigger boss here tonight, huh? I say he's spending most of his time in Washington, patting a congressman as a back. <laughs> <laughs> and making speeches. I can hear him now. My friends, since you are all a part of radio, I'm sure you feel as I do about our beloved sponsor, Caesar Cluck's untimely death. It is the first disaster to happen within Radio Forum. And the newspapers, whom I need not tell you, will stop at nothing to make a tremendous story of it. So I ask, in fact, I demand absolute silence regarding the matter. You are not to discuss it with anyone, not even amongst yourselves. Whatever statements are issued to the press must come from this office. Do I make myself clear? Yes, but Mr. Jones, don't you think... You can't see me, you come All right, Jones, uh, what's the lowdown? Now, Mr. Jones, right. quiet, 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 please. Now, you'll all get a statement. I shall show no partiality. But first, let me introduce Dr. Sylvester, the well-known radio commentator. I, I, and I, I, these I, folks are members of the Popola production staff. Frankly, Mr. Cluck's sudden death was a terrific shock to me, as well as to his friends and co-workers. The man was not only an industrial genius and advertising wizard, but he had a great soul, as simple as a child whom anyone from Porter to President at Consolidated could call friend. Never mind the hearts and flowers. We didn't come for the obituary. We want to know what happened. Yeah, well, what are you Who found the body? Well, now, one question at a time, gentlemen. I know you must all get your papers on the street at a certain time, so I'll let Dr. Sylvester, who was Cluck's personal physician, and with him when he died, give you the details. My patient died from natural causes. Mr. Cluck suffered for years from coronary sclerosis. In other words, he died from a heart attack. Brought on by the excitement. C-O-R-O-N-A-R-Y-S-C-L-E-R-O-S-I-S. Who else besides the doctor was with us? Well, now, just a minute. Once please, once more. C-O-R-O. Well, what's the use? That wasn't what caused his death. If they perform an autopsy, they find that out. Well, uh, let's not disturb them. Uh, come out in the hall. I want to talk to you alone. 
Well, hey, where are you going? Uh, uh, he's going to show me the new building. It's a, uh, the thing. Don't get excited, boys. It's oh, a, don't yeah. give me that stuff. What do you know? Wait a minute, wait a minute. All I said was that an autopsy should be performed. An autopsy on a sponsor? Preposterous. But, Mr. Jones, an autopsy will show that Cluck was killed by gas. Gas? Give me the story. How do you know? Now, wait a minute. That's a lot of rock. That's bunkum. He, he died from heart failure. Plain, ordinary heart failure. His doctor should know. Did you see Cluck's body? Yes. This blood stain came from a scratch on Cluck's head. It shows evidence oh, of... Oh, there's nothing to this. All city dwellers inhale small quantities of gas. From automobile fumes, uh, burning rubbish, or oh, a dozen things. We don't inhale enough to turn blood that color, Doctor. Well, how could gas get in here? Why, we pay a lot of money for this air. Why, the ventilating system cost a half a million dollars. I found the ventilating system had been tampered with. Ventilating system? Gas? Let me... That telephone? Oh, oh, hey, wait a minute! Stop! You better get me the star. Hurry up. Yeah, make it snap. Leave them it's quite interesting, this newspaper work. What? I say your friend, Mr. Butts, he's a hero. He's a sap. Hey, wait, 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 get away from that phone! Hey, you can't win stuff like that! Let me have that phone! The ventilating system and gas got it and killed Cluck. Yes, I bet. Wait a minute, I'll call you right back. Thank you. Is there another telephone in the other room? Yes, no! You idiot! Get out of here! You're fired! Get out! Do you hear? Okay, Mr. Jones, if that's the way you feel. That's the way I feel about it! And you listen to me. If any of you breathe a word of this around here, I'll fire you. Furthermore, I'll sue for libel, slander, and defamation of character. Hello. I'll show you who's... What do you want? Why don't you answer that phone? Oh. Hello. Hello. What are you doing out here? Just thinking. About your job? I can get another job, all right, but after tonight, I'd kind of like to stay here. Why don't you go up and tell Jones you're sorry you spoke out of turn? I can get Mac and Fenny to use their influence to get your job back. Well, maybe I was a little indiscreet letting those newspaper men hear me, but still, the facts deserve investigating. Oh, well, suppose you are right. What difference does it make? And besides, let Jones worry about his own troubles. You seem to forget that murder comes easier the second time. Can you prove it was murder? No, but a good criminologist could. Well, then why don't you let a good criminologist do it? It's none of your business. I guess you're right. Oh, well, come on. Let's go up and talk to Joe. No, no, Miss McCorkle, I, I couldn't. Because if anybody asked me about my statements tonight, I'd have to tell them what I thought. But I... I would like to be able to get in here once in a while. Well, I think that could very easily be arranged. It's kind of late to stand here to talk about it, though. You could drop up to my place and we could talk it over there. I don't know where you live. Well, do I have to come right out and ask you to take me home? What? Oh, no. No. Uh, I'd be glad to. Well, all right. <laughs> That's the girl. You're not going to do it here, are you, Joe? She's the only one who can put the finger on me. Yeah, but there's a hundred people around here. Are you busy? No, lady. You want a cab? Get down! I see what you mean. Get in there, quickly. You can sit up now. I recognized that man with the gun. You did? Who was it? We were on our way to the sponsor's room, and he stopped Cluck out in the hall. And Cluck didn't seem very happy about it, either. Then that's why he took a shot at you, so you couldn't identify him. Now do you believe Cluck was murdered? Well, I don't think that fellow was shooting at clay pigeons. Blew something? My purse. You didn't have it when you came out. Well, I guess I left it at the studio. Um, why don't you tell me something about yourself? Just in case I have to have it chiseled on a tombstone or something. I'm very unimportant. My full name is Benjamin Franklin Butts. Why? I, I was born on Franklin's birthday. Oh. <laughs> it could have been worse, you know. Could have been St. Swithin's Day. Or April Fool. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I studied at five colleges, took postgraduate work in chemistry, physics, biology, uh, bacteriology. That's enough. Haven't you even got a personal side? Sure. Sure, I wear wool socks, I have two fillings in my back teeth, I... 
press my own pants, and I'm very glad that something like this happened to know you better. Well, how long have you felt that way? About a year and a half. A year and a half? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you let me in on it? Well, I guess I'm not impulsive. Impulsive? Brother, you're terrific. You had no right to publish that story. I'll sue every newspaper in town. Well, you can't destroy a $30 million business. I'll make you prove every word of it. There is no poison gas in this building. The air is wonderful. It's the purest in the world. I ought to know I've been here all night. What's, what's the matter with that bird? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Think? Well, you'd better know. If one of those birds so much as nods its head, I want to know about it. Hello. Hello. He hung up on me. Oh, what am I going to do? Every editor laughs at me. It's the chance they've been waiting for. They call me an advertising burglar. They're out to finish me. And they will if you don't do something. So far, I've been able to laugh the corner out of looking at the body. But if those reporters start counting him, there's bound to be an investigation. And you can't afford that, and neither can I. Oh, uh, couldn't we just bury him or ship the body away? Don't talk like a schoolboy. You know we can't. As far as we know, Cluck had no relative. But suppose one of them did pop up and start asking questions. Why, we'd both be ruined for life. Look, can't you make a suggestion? Why, I'm going crazy with Washington calling every minute, my board of directors tearing their hair out, sponsors refusing to come into the building, no engineers, no announcers, no performers, not even an agent, nothing but phonograph records, phonograph records. Why, do you realize that the all-star benefit tonight followed two hours later by the president's fireside chat? I don't know what you're going to do about the benefit, but the president's message should quiet people down. And you don't have to announce it's coming by a remote control. Well, what about engineers? Not one of them to touch a control board. Wait a minute. I've got it. What? You can do it. You can put it over. Do it to what? Find something else which caused Cluck's death and make it believable. Now, quiet down, Harry. Your nerves are beginning to crack. Nothing of the sort. Why, if we can find a motive and make an arrest, our problems are solved, aren't they? Sure. Sure. But it's impossible. We haven't got a clue to hang our head on. Didn't I tell you not to bother me? What the deuce do you want? Mr. Tuttle wishes to see you. Says it's very important. All right, send him in. <laughs> At least he's got nerve enough to come into the building. Good morning, gentlemen. What's good about it? I ran across this in the Lawson Found Department. The contents should interest you. That letter might help to uh, clear the air around here. Terrific. Colossal. Why, this is it. Now I know what killed Caesar Cluck. What? Poison. Oh, who? Who said so? Listen to this. Dear Steenie McCockle, you will find the information you requested regarding poisons attached to this letter. You will note I have underlined the amount necessary to cause immediate death. P.S. If it is for a sponsor, I suggest a little more than is indicated. They are pretty tough babies. Now that I come to think of it, what could have been poison? Aiken? Yes, sir. Phone police headquarters. Have them send a homicide detective here at once. Miss McCorkle's in Studio X, putting Aunt Poodle's pickles around the air. What? Well, how does she get performers and engineers? I don't know. I saw her when she came in. She said she had a contract with a sponsor and wasn't going to let anyone stop her. Uh-huh. There you are. That's ample proof she wasn't worried about gas. He's the last person I expected to show up today. Control room, Studio X. No I can't call her now. She's on the air. All right, I'll tell her. <laughs> Why don't you take that thing off? There's nothing wrong with the ventilating system. Well, that isn't what you told me upstairs, and I'm not taking any chances. What I told you upstairs. This program is brought to you from the cool kitchens where Mrs. Poodle's pickled goodies are made. 
And to show you how Mrs. Poodle appreciates your loyalty, Mr. Fish will tell you about our special gift offer. If you want one of our dainty pickled forks, all you have to do is to just send one cellophane wrapper from our Deluxe Dill Pickles and one dime to defer the cost of mailing. Until tomorrow, dill de dill Radio Forum. This is the consolidated broadcasting system. That's it. Thank you very much, Harry. Is there anything else I can do, Mr. Corkle? And how? You're going to be the vanishing cream troubadour. He will vanish when he hears me. Come on. Oh, uh, Mr. Corkle. Steenie, to you. Mr. Jones wants to see you in his office. <laughs> okay, thanks. Do you want to see me, Mr. Jones? Yes. I thought I fired you. You did. Mr. Jones, I want to suggest... Never mind your suggestions. You get out of this building. I'm now working for McCorkle, McCorkle, and Fish. If my boss tells me to go, I'll go. Oh, is that so? Well, what's the matter with you? He's a radio engineer. Huh? The president's fireside chat. Oh, yes, yes, of course. But I may have been a little bit hasty last night, but the fireside chat of uh, the president... Uh, uh, don't you think uh, we'd better get this over with first? Yes, but Butch has nothing to do with it. And nevertheless, I suggest that we proceed before the police arrive. The police? Miss McCorkle, is this your purse? Why, why, yes. Where'd you find it? Never mind that. I suppose you know this letter was inside it. Oh, that? <laughs> I'd completely forgotten about it. You seem to have forgotten a lot of things. Yeah, things that are damaging enough to convict you of the murder of Caesar Trucks. Let me see that letter. Now, it'll do you no good to destroy it. We've made copies and witnesses will testify they saw the original. It doesn't mean a thing. No? No. Well, perhaps you'll change your mind. Dr. Sylvester has discovered that Mr. Cluck died from poison. And Miss McCorkle was the last person with him. As far as we know. Well, we know she learned about poison. This box of tablets was found in your purse. The contents would kill several people. Not so fast. I admit the letter. It referred to research on a series of crime stories I'm writing. But if those pills were in my purse, somebody put them there. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll have to explain that to the district attorney and a jury. Mr. Jones, the homicide detectives are here. Show them in. I can't. They're down in the street. What? Yes, sir. They've been reading the newspapers and refused to enter the building. They said to send the prisoner down to them. Let me talk to them. You might as well send them back to headquarters because there isn't going to be any arrest. Unless they want to take Dr. Sylvester. Sylvester? Yes. Puck had enough poison in him to kill the average man. But Dr. Sylvester didn't have to perform an autopsy to find that out. Because he gave it to him. Oh, that's ridiculous. What? What is she saying? I'm trying to bluff you, Harry. Get me the district attorney's office. If you put this girl under arrest, I think the DA should know that I saw Cluck take a tablet of a certain drug just before his death. And the label on the box carried your name as prescribing physician. I wouldn't do anything hasty. Then you did? Oh, no, of course not. I did prescribe a heart stimulant for Cluck, but if he took an overdose, it must have been an accident. Now that I come to think of it, I'm sure it wasn't poison. Then what did kill him? Now, don't say gas or ventilating system. Mr. Jones, if you'll give me 24 hours, I'll find out who did this thing and prove there's nothing wrong with your ventilating system. Well, that's time enough to ruin me. Well, you're ruined anyway if we don't solve this case. Come on, Feeney. I'll take this before you boys decide to plant a shotgun in it. A shotgun? Now, calm yourself, Harry. <laughs> It's as simple as that, huh? Yes. How do you know so much about Cluck's apartment? Well, I've been there. Oh, well, chaperoned by Mac and Benny, of course. Mm. Well, let me get this straight. We go in the theater, up in the balcony, out on the fire escape, across the roof of the garage, jump the alley, and... And then where are we? We're on the terrace that leads to Cluck's apartment. We don't get 20 years for this. What's the matter? Gone, but not forgotten. Oh, no. What do we do now? We look for the safe. Well, they're usually behind books. But there aren't any books. 
I guess Cluck did something else with his spare time. Well, maybe behind the pictures. No, no. He, he'd think of a better place than that. He... Hmm. My intuition tells me behind a picture. A picture. You win. Your heartbeat? Shh. Quiet, please. Say, you weren't kidding when you said your hearing was better than other people's, were you? No, of course not. The ear can be trained, just like the other five senses. Where's the six? What made you look behind this picture? Intuition. That's right. I might have known that would happen. You mean you're not dead? Not yet. That was just a vial of acid set to go off in case someone opened that safe who wasn't supposed to. These papers must be important. I bet that report was heard for blocks. Well, let's get out of here before someone decides to investigate. The doorman. Is there any other way out of here? I've got it. Come on. Well, well what are you... Here. Behind these curtains. Well, what about yeah, you? I'm there and stay there. But listen. Yeah. Shut up. Shut off that gun. Well, I don't know. It didn't come from this apartment. Well, I smell smoke. Yes, I noticed it too. But there's no fire in here. Maybe there's a chemical plant around somewhere. I uh, did notice the uh, smoke coming from that window across the street, though. Okay, I'll report it. Who are you? And what are you doing in here, anyway? Me? Don't you remember me? I was Mr. Cluck's girlfriend. Which one? Oh, there you go. Just like everybody else, trying to tell me things about my dear Clucky. But I was the only one he really cared for. He told me so himself. So when I heard about his accident, I had to come back and play his favorite piece at the scene of our great happiness. Where are you? Suicide, are you? No, no. All right. You weren't supposed to be in here, you know. Of all the disgusting exhibitions. Why didn't you like it? Oh, I do so want to be an actress. Really, I do, really. Come on, let's get out of here. Not until I see that fellow down on the street again. Nobody could be that dumb. How do we get into Cook's apartment? I don't know. I think the doorman's gonna let us in. Sir, there's no private house. What's that dog giving me? Oh, excuse me, uh, uh... Uh-oh, we've got to get out of here. Well, what's the matter? That fellow who took a pot shot at you just held up the doorman. He must be after these. Oh. There's enough evidence in here to send him up for life. What are we waiting for? Hello, hello, police headquarters. This is 618 Park Avenue. 
I just saw a man break into Caesar Cluck's apartment. I'm sure it's robbery. Radio form, driver. I wonder what's going on up there. Still playing phonograph records. There go those ears again. Buck certainly had enough on Connie. He's wanted in California for robbery, in Texas for mayhem, and in this state for murder. Well, then that solves our case. Connie waited till I'd left Cluck alone in the sponsor's room and then came back and killed him. How? Oh, choked him or scared him to death or beat him. A man who carries a gun generally uses it. And Cluck wasn't shot. Well, a gun would have made too much noise. No, no, it wouldn't. That room's soundproof. Still, this does give him a motive. And the fact that he was in the building time, together with his police record, should give the DA enough evidence to get a conviction. Still, there are several things that don't tie together. Well, what are they? Well, the voice that frightened you out of the room, the tape ventilator. Do you think Connie would know enough about radio to do those things? Well, he might. I doubt it. Hey, here's a notation. Paid to Dr. Sylvester, April 17th, $10,000. Here's another one. Paid to Dr. Sylvester, $5,000. What could that be for? For a broadcast, maybe? Well, he's never been on one of Cluck's shows. Maybe he was paid to stay off of them. Well, that's it. Can we get a transcript of Dr. Sylvester's broadcasts on these dates? Well, I'm sure we have them on file in the office. Good. Greetings. Hi. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. That's not a phonograph record. That's the all-star benediction. Personally supervised by McCorkle, Fish, and the absent McCorkle. <laughs> <laughs> so help me out. And now the time has come to end ideas. To au revoir, pleasant dreams. Think of us when requesting your things. Yeah. And now, good night, Marcidio. Bless you. When the blue of the night meets the gold of the day. And the gold of her hair crowns the blue of her eyes. Boo, 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 boo. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the old groaner in the radio forum. If my eyes don't deceive me, here comes number one citizen in the Sage of the Ozarks. What are you going to dream up tonight for, Satchel Mouth? being on this program with you. I can remember when I first started out down in Van Buren in Grandpappy's stable. Uh, he had a stable there and I was stable boy. You know, that's a tough job. If you don't watch your work, it sure piles up on you. Oh, is this the boy who does the imitations? This is a boy who did the imitations. Uh, do you suppose you could imitate my voice? Later. In five minutes, his voice will be the lonesome cowboy. Hi-ho, Rover! Whoa! Kid loves his horse. Here it comes. Get him up. Come on, boy. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Wait till I get it back to fall out. Well, you've done very well to get us this far. Come on, leave it off. Well, where have you been? Safe cracking. We've got enough dope here on Cluck's killer. It's in the bag. Uh, Steeny, uh, you'd better come with me. We've plenty of work to do. Hurry up, boys. We'll go on an elevator. Oh, oh well, maybe, uh, what would you? I'm sorry, but we're going down. But then I'll go down. Oh, well, then on that chair. You shouldn't have said that. But why? I, I think Connie did it. Yeah, but you can't think. You've got to know. I overheard your remarks, Steeny. What makes you think you have Cluck's killer? Oh, various reasons. Why do you ask? Well, I have a hunch that I know who visited Cluck after you left him in sponsor room X. You have? Who? I accidentally overheard an argument between Tony and Maria. It seems that Cluck gave Maria a diamond brooch. Her father might have dropped in to give it back to her. Well, that's very interesting, but why tell us? Mr. Jones is the one to know. 
Well, it doesn't mean anything one way or the other to me, but I had understood that you'd guaranteed to find Clark's killer, and I thought I'd give you the tip. Well, thanks a lot, Dave. You've helped a lot. All right. Good luck. Well, what do you think of that? I've got the brooch in my pocket. There's Maria. Let's check it. Hello, Maria. Oh, no one seems to want any information today, so I have to do something to keep awake. <laughs> Maria, did you ever see this before? No, never. You sure? Yes. Hmm, that's funny. Because both your fingerprints and your father's were found on it. All right, it's mine. I mean, well, Mr. Clark gave it to me, and Papa saw him and took it away from me to... But Papa didn't kill him, honestly, Mr. Butts. Mr. Clark was alive when Papa left him. Where is your father, Maria? I don't know. I... I'll see if I can find him. Well, this puts a different light on our theory, doesn't it? Did you really find her fingerprints on it? No, but I could see she was lying, and I wanted to trip her up. Boy, are you some tripper-upper. <laughs> I fell for it myself. Well, you get to work on those papers, and I'll join you as soon as I've seen Tony. Tony! Oh, Tony, I wanted to ask you... McCorkle's office. This is Ben Butts. Hello. Oh, Ben. Ben, listen, I got it. Connie worked for Clark and... What? I said Tony's been murdered by a balloon full of gas. Are there any balloons in your office? No, but look, I'm trying to tell you that... Balloons? Yes, there's, there's one right here on my desk. Then take it to a window and toss it out and get out of there. Sure, why don't you try it? It's fun. Well, at least you were gentleman enough to tell me before I broke a blood vessel, trying to hold my breath. Well, I thought you were trying to set some kind of a new world's record or something. Well, I wasn't. Well, what were you doing down there, anyway? Here, hold this. Well, you called out and told me to get the balloon out of here, and I'd left a cigarette up on the ashtray, and I started for the door like this. Hey, wait a minute. Don't do it with this one. It was one like this that killed Cluck and Tony. All the balloons with gas in them had this mark on them. You mean that there's gas in that one? Yeah. Well, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to confront the killer with this little toy. I'm going to put it right under his nose and watch him squirm. But you promised to deliver Caesar Cluck's killer. Instead, Tony Lasati has been murdered. Yet you do nothing but assemble the only people who are trying to keep Consolidated going. Patience, Mr. Jones, patience. I didn't let you down on the fireside chat, did I? The new deal is going serenely on. I insist you let us know what you know. Mr. Jones, if I point out the murderer, will you capture him? Yes. No. Then suppose we wait for the district attorney and his men. Now, Mr. Butts? Uh, not now. Sit down. 
Will you please tell me I'm dying? Who did it? I haven't the slightest idea. The district attorney. Oh, come right in, gentlemen. How do you do? Uh, Mr. Francis, this is the young lady I was telling you about. Nice work, Mr. You mean catching Connie? <laughs> well, I had it all figured out from the start. Well, then, probably you can tell me. Uh, oh, well, probably. no. Uh, I'd rather you ask my assistant all the questions. <clears throat> yeah, did you uh, get anything from Connie? A full confession. Well, that should interest Mr. Tuttle. Did you uh, find the pencil you were looking for last night in the sponsor's room? Green with uh, gold band? Well, uh, now that you have me, I, I might as well confess. For a long time, the local authorities have been trying to stop Cluck's whispering campaigns. But they were never able to get enough evidence to prosecute on. So they appealed to the Federal Communications Commission. I was sent up from Washington to find out whether Cluck was paying Dr. Sylvester for boosting Parpola and knocking his competitors. He handed Cluck a message when he came in last night. But it wasn't among Cluck's effects. So I went up to the sponsor's room to look for it. I see. By the way, Doctor, why did you remain in this building a full half hour after your Nature Oil broadcast? Why, I... I talked with the engineer for 15 minutes about my speech, and then I had business with Mr. Jones. Caesar Cluck was killed after the Popola broadcast. Did it take you the next 15 minutes to get to the reception room? No, but uh, there was no reason to rush. I had plenty of time. Yes, you had plenty of time. Time enough to go to the upper corridor, wait for Steeny to leave Cluck, then slip in and kill him. You're mad. <clears throat> Maybe you're right. <sighs> Doctor, I understand you're quite interested in Harry Lake's imitations. Do you hear? Ever hear him do the shadow? <laughs> <laughs> did anyone tell you to do that laugh last night? Well, uh... Oh, stop all this. I did it. I taped up the ventilating system, but I did it to scare Cluck, not to kill him. Then you tripped me on the staircase and had Harry frighten your sister over the radio so she'd leave the room and you could get back in and remove your fingerprints in the adhesive tape. Yes, but when I learned about Cluck's death, I was frantic. But I didn't use poison gas. I don't know anything about it. I know you don't. Or you would have removed the broken balloon that killed Cluck when you destroyed the other evidence. How can you kill a man with a balloon? Hit him over the head with it? Come here, Penny, and I'll show you. Hold this for a minute, will you? Is it heavy? I I'm awfully tired. Suppose this balloon was filled with a deadly gas. And the murderer wanted to stay at a safe distance. He could take an ordinary soda straw like this, and an ordinary pin with a little wad of paper on it, and then he could... Don't break that balloon in here! But there's no gas in that one. But there is, I can't... There's your man, Mr. Francis. You don't need those. Well, how about it, Dave? All right, I killed him. He ruined my father, who was president of Johnson's Beverage. And with our business gone and nothing left, I came to work here. I won a Dixon Award and Cluck demanded me for his program. Nelson committed suicide. It was to me as though Cluck had killed him. I tried to forget, but I couldn't. His face was everywhere, even on these balloons. They were driving me mad. So I figured out a way to use them to kill him. But why did you kill Tony? I didn't kill Tony. I put the balloons everywhere I thought Cluck would go. Tony must have accidentally broken one when he was ordered to pick them up. All right, young man. Aiken, get me the publicity department, legal department, and every newspaper in town. I want you to dramatize this story for the cavalcade of time. The nation should know. But you're going to be the head of the engineering department. Oh, gee, won't that be nice? You can be around all the time now. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm going away for a while. But I'm offering you a big job. Well, thank you, Mr. Jones, but I'm afraid that'll have to wait. You see, I... Uh, I have another scientific problem. Miss McCorkle and I are going to work it out together at Niagara Falls. Uh, huh? That is, if she can decide which one of these names she'd like to use. Well, any one of them is all right with me. Well, let's go. Oh, oh uh, Harry. Now. Tant, 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 tant.